Hey, what's up you guys? My name is Vivian from the Paper Letter blog and today I'm going to show you a few ways you can make envelopes. Now, as you can see on the left, I have a huge pile of supplies here, but don't worry, you do not actually need that much because like I said, I'm going to show you a couple different ways some of which you do not really need these supplies for. So I'm gonna go straight into it and tell you about the first thing I used to make envelopes and that is a printable envelope template. Now, when I first started snail mailing, I didn't have a lot of fun envelopes and stuff like that, but I did want to make my own envelope. So what I did is I went to Google, <laughs> trustworthy Google and Pinterest and I simply typed in something along the lines of um, printable envelope template or envelope stencil or something like that and then you will find a lot of different sizes, a lot of different shapes and basically a lot of different printables. So that is what I started with and what I did to make it easier for myself is I printed them out once or twice, depending on how well it worked. And what I did then is I cut them out and I traced them on um, cardstock. So this is some ugly cardstock that I wasn't going to use anyway. Bright orange isn't really my color. So I simply, uh, simply traced the envelope template on here again so that I would have a reusable envelope stencil. This is super simple. Uh, all you have to do is you trace this and then these striped lines are actually the fold lines so all you literally all you do is you, you trace this you fold this and you've got your envelope easy as that now this is a small one but i also had bigger envelope stencils just this is just the only one i currently have left um but like i said i promise you there are so many out there um you can use and also what i did is this is a certain size which is quite small but if there was an envelope shape i liked but it didn't have the size i wanted i would simply enlarge or make the uh, image smaller so that i could make my own size of envelope uh, stencil or template that is by far the most cost effective and easy way to do this. I know a lot of you are going to say, but Vivian, I don't have a printer, but you can usually print at either supermarkets or libraries or at your work. So that shouldn't be too much of a problem. And like I said, you only have to print it once if you turn it into a um, sturdy template like I did, because I actually use this one quite a lot and it's still perfectly fine. So that's my first tip for making envelopes, look for printables. That's basically my first tip for everything in snail mail. <laughs> There's so much to find online. Now, the te envelope templates are something I have used so much in my time as a snail mailer. Um, because after I made my own, I ended up finding a few uh, pre-made templates. So this is by far my favorite one because it is kind of easy to follow and um, quite pretty <laughs> if you ask me. So this is a wooden envelope stencil that I actually got in a Dutch craft online craft store if I'm not mistaken. But as you can see I have many many more. I have tons of different ones. These are all from AliExpress the colorful and the wooden ones and this one is from Hema which is a store I know a lot of people in Europe have and don't ask me this one it also makes some sort of weird triangle shape but it doesn't make a whole lot of sense <laughs> so oh yeah and this one this is so weird this is also an envelope stencil but it is um tilted like who needs a tilted envelope I don't know AliExpress I actually did not end up using these that much. This one is for a gift bag, which is quite handy. And then this one is for a square envelope, which you can um, put like a, like one of those CD envelopes, you know, where you can put a little window in to see the CD. <laughs> so I have a lot because I simply love making my own envelopes. And even though I have now upgraded, I still use those quite often. 
One last tip for making your own envelope template is to um, open up an existing envelope. So when you have an envelope that, for example, your bills came in or something like that, simply carefully peel open the envelope. Wait. So for example, this one holds those little, actually holds little, um, how do you call that? like little things, like little challenges my cousin made for me. For example, it says make a flower crown and wear it during a video or tell us three good jokes. I don't think I know three good jokes, but okay. This is an existing envelope. Let's say that my mail came in here and what you're going to do, I'm probably going to mess it up now. I'm ruining a perfectly fine envelope for this. Beautiful. And then I would once again suggest you trace this on cardstock because this is not really easy to trace like if I were to trace this it might easily go wrong so I suggest tracing it on cardstock first and then you've got your own envelope stencil so that is how I used to do it in the early days but okay I also have an envelope envelope punch board which I will show you a little bit later on in this video but this video tutorial is basically for anyone and everyone so it also includes um, tips and tricks for people who do not have an envelope punch board. So before I had an envelope punch board I would laugh at people who had an envelope punch board because I thought it would be something of a waste of money but it's actually not. If the envelope punch board really is my go-to tool now but before I did that I had a, I still have, a scoreboard. Score and trim board. This is from We Are Memory Keepers. I will link everything I've used down below. This is not sponsored. I bought all of this with my hard-earned money as working as a waitress. Um, but this is definitely one of my most used tools. And I also used it to make envelopes. And what I did is, I'm pretty proud of myself for this. What I did is I created a um, an envelope making formula. Believe it or not, what I did, I don't even remember how I did it exactly, but I actually made this myself, okay? I tried looking for this online, it does not exist. But what I did is I um, I took an envelope, an existing envelope, and I divided, look, you can even see my calculations here. We've got A and B, and then I did B divided by A, and then I got a certain number, and then eventually it turned into a formula. I don't know, my math teacher would probably, very pr would probably be very proud of me, but basically the formula is, size of your paper divided by three is score line A. And if you do score line A times 1.32, you have score line B. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense now, but I'm going to show you. Again, you can also do this without a scoreboard, but then you need a ruler and mm, it's a little bit more difficult. I really do suggest using this with the scoreboard. I'm gonna grab some papers first. But what this formula does is it takes the size of your paper. So if you want to um, start with the size of your project, project, it doesn't work like that. So with, for example, the envelope punch board, you can pick your card size. So you can pick how big do you need the envelope to be, and then you can pick the size of the paper. But this actually works with the size of the paper. So it doesn't give you, so at, up first, you do not actually know how big your envelope is going to be, so that's a little bit tricky. But it does make a really simple, really fun envelope. So, but the good thing about this is it works with any size paper. I tried it with all different sizes. You can make teeny tiny envelopes, you can make huge envelopes. It works with any size as long as it fits in your scoreboard. And if you don't have a scoreboard, as long as you can measure it with the ruler, you'll be able to make an envelope out of that so that's pretty good especially if you have leftover paper scraps you can turn them into little envelopes which is great <laughs> okay so I'm going to start with showing you a, a six by six size paper okay so the size of our paper I will put the link I, I will put the formula in the description as well so you can look it look back at it that might make it easier so we have six by six paper and what we're going to do is we're going to tilt it sideways because if we have an envelope, um, it is, look, if you look at this one, this is our envelope and this is the end result. As you can see, it makes a lot of sense to tilt the envelope, to tilt the paper like this, I mean. Then what we're going to do is we're going to make sure we have it 
lined correctly and that is why I have all of these marker lines so that I can see if the top of the paper is at the same mark line same score line as the bottom okay, so make sure that your paper touches exactly at the zero mark but with me there's like a, a, a tiny little bit of space left but I think that should be all right so if you have a six by six paper you're going to put the the top and the bottom at four and one fourth of an inch now we're going to find our score line a we're going to do the size of the paper which is um, six inches divided by three is two obviously so our first score line is going to be at two inches two inches that's easy and to make it a little bit easier for myself I'm going to color in let me just grab a combo I'm going to color in so that we can more easily see there we go um, don't worry you can very easily wash this off but now as you can see we can easily see that the bottom and the top are both at the four and one fourth of an inch mark and now we can also see that we have a little bit of space left but that's going to be fine so our a score line is two inches now we're going to flip it all the way around so that our scored page oh my god i just realized this is double-sided how cute we're going to flip it all the way around so that our uh, folded page is over this over here so we're going to make a full turn and then we're going to put it back at the <laughs> pink stripe and we're going to do a score it at two again two score it at two inches and now if you look at this um, little envelope you will see that this would basically be score line A so score line A is basically the side flaps of the envelope and score line B would be the larger ones I'll turn it upside down so you can see more easily wait I will write it on here our paper size is six inches we're going to divide that by three is two so that is score line a i really hope this makes sense now we're going to do that times one what was it 1.32 times 1.32 is <laughs> and that will be score line b I really hope this makes sense, but once you get the hang of this little formula and you have a scoreboard, it will be so easy. So when I do that times 132, it gives me 2 inches and 46. Uh, yeah, 2.46 2 inches. Now, 46 obviously does not line up with the 1.8 um, system, which is why down here I wrote down what all of the inches mean so 2.46 is closest to the 2.5 uh, of an eighth inch 2 inches and 5 of an eighth does that make sense? I really hope so I want to point out, I realize I forgot that now that I'm using inches while I usually use centimeters you could also do this with centimeters I will show you in I will show you the next example with centimeters to show you that it works just the same. Now we're going to turn it sideways again. I've turned it upside down so you can more easily see what I'm doing. We're going to turn it sideways again, put the top and the bottom at the pink stripe, which was two, four and one fourth of an inch. And then we're going to um, do our B score line. Now we just found out that the B score line is 2.64 which matches to 5 eighth of an inch best so now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to score it there so 2 2 5 eighth of an inch and there we go and we're going to flip it so that our B score line is all the way on the left and then we are going to score it again at two five eight of an inch so now as you can see it starts to resemble our envelope template quite a lot these are the side flaps which is score line a and these are the top and the bottom flaps which is score line b as you can also see let me color that in that actually might make it easier as you can also see here 
where the score lines meet, you get these little triangles. And I think it's nicest if you cut them out because otherwise you're left with a little bit of an overlap which might look ugly. So I'm just coloring them in to make it obvious. So we're going to cut them out. Just those tiny triangles. You don't have to do that. I just think it looks nicer in the end. Going to cut them out. Cut them out. Cut them out. And then all you have left to do is fold. So you can decide which way you want to be up and which way you want to be down. Like I know this sounds, this may sound very intimidating at first, but like I said, once you get the hang of it, you will be making envelopes in no time. And what I love about this is that you can use any size paper you have, um, as long as it's square, and you will never waste another scrap of paper again if you can turn them into these fun little envelopes. So the 6x6 paper actually ends up making a an envelope that is 3 uh, 3 one eighth of an inch by 4.5 inches. So that's quite a good size. And the only thing we're going to toss is these little paper scraps. And then we've used up our whole 6x6 paper for an envelope. Which is why I think this formula is pretty great. Not gonna lie. Now, I will show you that it works with any size paper, um, and I'm also going to show you that it works with centimeters as well. I'm going to pick a paper first. Let me go with this one, just a simple one. I pur purchased this entire block especially for making envelopes, um, which is showing you how much I love making envelopes. I'm going to make it, I could do 12 by 12. The only thing that's making this difficult is that, as you can see, um, or I hope you can see, let me put it like that. As you can see, our paper then does not fit on the envelope punch board anymore, or I mean on the scoreboard anymore, but it, it, it is still possible. You just have to find a way to score all the way down, but I'm not gonna do that because why I don't need an envelope that big. I'm going to make it slightly smaller. I think I'll go for nine inches, which probably still leaves, probably still leaves, um, no, wait, let me check. Yeah, that still leaves the paper too big, <laughs> but we will figure it out. Okay, I'm gonna work with the centimeters now. This is a little bit difficult, but my paper currently is 23 centimeters by 23 centimeters. And my middle mark is at 16, 16.3 centimeters, I'm guessing, which is a little bit difficult because they are not exact numbers in centimeters. So we had, what did I say? 23 centimeters size, 23 centimeters um, divided by three is 7.3. Let me check. 7 point something. 23 divided by divided by 3 is 7.66. 7 7.66, which is score line A. And then we're going to do that times 1.32 again. I hope it works with centimeters. Times 1.32 is 10, comma. <laughs> I'm speaking Dutch. 10 point is 10.12, which is score line B. Now, let me see. So we place our paper again at 16.3 centimeters, and then we're going to score line A first, which was 7.66 centimeters, which should be around here, I think. That's difficult. It's a little bit more difficult because the numbers aren't exact. It should be around there. And then we flip it all the way and then we put it back at the spot and we do 7.66 again so just slightly over the 7.5 mark and then we do we flip it once so that our score line a a's are at the top and the bottom and then 10.12 should be around there. I think this one will be less nice than the inches one just because the numbers aren't exact. 
but it should be alright nonetheless. And I simply use inches because it's easier as this punch board is completely um, directed to people using inches. So 10.12 again. Let me see around there. And there we go. And if you if there's a certain size of envelope you're going to use a lot, such as this one would probably be a size I use a lot, um, I suggest turning it into a stencil so that you can more easily make these little envelopes. So I'm going to cut out the triangles again. Triangles. And then, as you can see, we've once again got an envelope stencil. Now, this one does seem to have a, a lot of overlap. Or actually, no, it's quite okay. I'm taking that back. But you could also make this a little bit wider, just so that the middle is a little bit bigger and you have a little bit less overlap here. See, these two flaps are rather big. It would have been okay if they were a little bit smaller. But once again, we've got our little envelope. I will also show you the end result. If you use nine by nine, nine inches by nine inches paper, you will get an envelope of 12 centimeters, 12 by 17 centimeters, or six five eighth of an inch by four five eighth of an inch, which is a very, very common size almost <laughs> and I, I quite like this size it will have a lot of space for goodies and um my letter now I, I didn't tell you this before but obviously the easiest thing to do is to glue this side i always look at how far i can glue which is around here and there and then i'm going to put glue until there and until there and if I put it higher up it's going to be stuck down to the middle so I always use my nail to make a little bit a little um, how do you call that indication until where I can put glue and then you put glue there and you can put glue, glue there now you could also put glue there and there I sometimes do that just as a precaution but if you glue them here it should be enough now, last but not least, um, with a scoreboard or with uh, scissors, you can also make an envelope simply by hand. I know my pen pal Roxanne does that, um, but I'm not going to tell you how because I've only done it once and it didn't look pretty. But if you want to do that, I suggest simply playing around with it until you find out something that works for you. I know there are many, many more ways you can make envelopes, um, but these are just the ways I feel comfortable telling you about. I suggest if you have another idea or if you have another way, feel free to leave a comment down below telling us all about it. Um, but I didn't, I chose not to tell you about it because with me it would look rather clumsy, and in my opinion, these are the easiest ways to do this. My final and uh, favorite way is using the envelope punch board. Like I said in the beginning I thought it was a little bit unnecessary but ever since I have it I am so happy with it. It is so easy to use. Again this is not sponsored, it is just... I just really like it. It even has a little bit of the directions here. It says select, select card size, trim paper to the correct size. Okay I'm just gonna show you because otherwise um... This is not going to make a whole lot of sense, but let us say we're going to find something to mail. Okay, let's say we're going to mail this little instruction paper, which is very old because I made it back in the previous apartment. So let's say we're going to mail this. So first we're going to measure it and it is five seven eighths of an inch uh, by four one eighth of an inch. And then we're going to see which envelope would match that. So we're gonna look for, what was it? I forgot already, 418. Okay, there's no envelope that would match that, but we can go for four and a half inches. Four and a half inches by, let's say, six inches. So four and a half inches and six inches. The paper I need is eight and a half by eight and a half. So we are just going to grab a paper that is eight and a half by eight and a half. Let's pick a simple one again. No, let's pick a pretty one. 
Like I said, I, I bought this paper specifically for making envelopes, but it is so hard to actually use them because I think they're so pretty and I would rather hoard them forever. Again, not sponsored, I'm just a fan of paper. So what did I say? Eight and a half, right? Did I say that correctly? Yes, eight and a half by eight and a half. So first we trim our paper down to the size we need. If you do not have a scoreboard, first of all, I recommend you get one because it is my most used tool of all times, but you can also use a regular paper trimmer or a ruler and scissors. And then, okay, so our paper is now down to the right size. And then the next thing we're going to do is find our score line. And the score line is three, three quarters of an inch. So what you're going to do is you're going to put your paper in and you're going to put the left, um, the left side on the three, three quarters of an inch mark. So that's there. And then all you're going to do is punch. And then you're going to score. And what you're going to do is you're going to put your, what is this called again? Score tool? Bone fold, thank you. You're going to put your bone folder, bone something, all the way on the right. I need to turn this sideways so you can hopefully see. You're going to put it on the right and underneath here is a score line. And all you have to do is follow that score line with this thingy. And then, as you can see, you have the beginning of an envelope. Then what you're going to do is you're going to turn it one quarter and you're going to line up our score line with this little thingy. So that little thingy needs to follow the line of our made score line. We punch again and we again follow that same score line we followed before. Twist it sideways. Make sure that this thingy follows the score line. Punch. And score. Twist it again. Make sure the thingy follows the score line. Punch and score. And then you have your envelope. Now, oh sorry, that's my phone. I need to silence that. I'm basically I'm waiting for uh, a call back for a job interview, which is very scary. But this one was made with uh, nine inch paper and this one is made with eight and a half by eight and a half. And actually the size is rather similar. This one is a little bit higher, but this one is a little bit wider. So this, and then what I like a lot about the envelope punch board is that it also has a reverse punch. So this side makes these little notches and then the other side rounds the rounds your corners. So ta-da! See, that looks a lot nicer than the regular ones. So that is my final way for making envelopes. If you do have space to put this little thingy and if you do have money, I really do recommend you get this. Again, this is in no way sponsored, but it's seriously so much fun to make envelopes. And what I like about this thing over my own formula is that you can pick the card size you need. Um, the only thing is that it does make the envelope a little bit wider. So this is the card size we picked. And the envelope is supposed to be a little bit bigger just so that you can easily take uh, put the card in and take it out again but other than that fantastic so those are all of my ways i love making envelopes uh if i forgot any feel free to let me know in a comment down below but do know that i um i recommend all of the the methods i have shown you before uh, last but not least i want to tell you that even if you don't have money to buy all of these tools and stuff as I showed you in the beginning of the video, there is so much you can do and I want to advise you to not look at the things you do not have. But um, okay, apparently my video was cut off at the time and I didn't realize it because as you could probably tell, I filmed this back in summer. Um, it took me a while to upload it, but I'm kind of happy I'm doing that now. So what I was saying is don't look at the things you don't have, look at the things you do have, which probably is a pen and some paper and um, you'll be able to make a stencil and all the stuff like that so i hope these tricks helped you don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if they did and i will see you in the next video let me know if you have any tips and tricks 
in the comment section down below and I will see you very soon. Okay, bye bye!